All right, we're going to talk about CSS3 theming here, and we're also going to talk about that in reference to OpenJS Grid. Now, I am not a designer by any means, so this is going to look terrible to those who are, but just keep in mind that this is the ability to do it, uh, not that it's supposed to look good that I did it. <laughs> okay, so this is OpenJS Grid, and I have restyled it using CSS3, uh, namely gradients and RGBA values. So to me, it looks a lot better than the old stuff, at least, um, which are, uh, let me just hop over to here, which kind of look like this, like this is the old style, <clears throat> very flat, and then the new style is gradient. So, and it's also got some CSS transitions in there, you can see the fading and whatnot. And in Firefox 4, at least, I haven't tested 3 yet, uh, it looks very similar, so it, it's actually cool that it's kind of cross-browser like that. Anyway, theming. So let's let's change this theme to a blue theme, okay? Right now we've got a dark gray theme. Well, there's a huge CSS file, right? So you're thinking, I'd have to go through here and change all the different things. Actually, you don't. You only have to change, like, four things. And they're the, it's these things right here. This is all you have to change. And here's why. Well, let me change it, and then I'll show you why. So there's this, see this Photoshop icon down here? We're going to use those colors. So I'm going to open, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to open my digital color meter, switching to RGBA hex is 8-bit. gives me the, the, the CSS color codes. So I'm just going to hover down here, and I'm going to grab this color being... 0179C1. Okay, copy that. So that's going to be our first color here and our first color here. This is for, for Mozilla and this one is for WebKit being both Chrome and Safari. And let's do the bottom color of Photoshop now, which is something like 06. And let's actually go one more darker than that. It's 054371. Okay, so we'll take those colors and that will be our second color. Then, what we want to do oops, is get the text color. See, the Photoshop has this blue color here. So we're going to want that to be 46D5F7. Okay, copy that. And that's going to be our text color, which you change right here. You should also change this background color, but this is just the background color that other browsers are going to use. So whatever. So save and refresh. And, okay, blue. There's blue in your face. <laughs> okay, so what this did is it used the theming that I set up to actually completely theme. You can even see that this button's now changed. Um, you know, the only thing it didn't change were the buttons, and that's because I didn't, you know, they aren't part of the theme, if you will. Although I guess buttons should be part of the theme. Maybe I'll make that part of the theme. But you would never want this blue <laughs> to be this blue. Um, but if you did, you could. So let's explain how that works. Okay. Um, what we're doing is, first of all, a WebKit gradient, uh, grad CSS gradient in general, but they're different for WebKit and CSS, or I'm sorry, and Mozilla. So the way it works is, <clears throat> the well, I guess the general thing, the way it works, is I ha everything has no background color at all. The only thing that has a background color is the main grid component. So let me open up um, Inspector here, and you can see this grid container is the only thing. It contains the it contains the entire grid. It's the only thing that actually has actual color. Everything else has transparency with gradient on it. Okay? Let me switch back to not blue because that's hard to look at for too long. Oops. Save and refresh. Okay. So so now we've got now that we've got our background color set okay everything on top of it is kind of transparent so it's going to be showing through that main color so that's how the theming works is you've just got one background color and everything else on top kind of has transparency so let's look at one of those so here's our main gradients that are behind the whole grid okay and then we've got one main color and that does the input boxes the a tags and color inside the table cells so let's take a look at uh, these rows okay these rows are alternating um, and the only way you can do alternating is by setting the color right so let's go to these alternating colors uh, which are where are you guys uh, do 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 okay odd and even rows so odd rows don't have any color on it but even rows have we're using RGBA okay if we didn't use RGBA and I didn't have this it would be they would just be white they they wouldn't be see through at all they would be white which is terrible that looks horrible so 0.02 i keep doing that 
Never undo too much. Jumps around. Okay, save, refresh. Okay, there we go, back. So what this is saying is saying I want 2% white. That's what it's saying. 2% white. Okay, and it's and it, it's saying th this is the alpha transparency. So it's it's saying white, but I only want to show point. Z I only want to show 2% of transparency. So I, it can go up to 100% white. So if I change this to one, it's going to be white again. See? If I change it to zero, it's going to be completely transparent. Thus being not. Um, opposite color rows. See how it's not alternating color now? It's kind of different color, but that's because of the main gradient in the background. But it's not alternating color. So that's why we do the point zero two. That way it gets that actual kind of alternating color as it's fading. It's actually quite an effect going on here. Um, so that so so using this technique, background color RGBA, we can actually slightly change the variations in shading throughout the whole application. And I believe yeah, I never I didn't change this right click menu. That's still the same. So let's go through another one here. So row highlight. Row highlight um, isn't isn't using this theming. It's just its own color right here. Okay, we could always change that, but right now it's always that blue color, which is the same type of gradient that we're using um, for the background. Okay, so now let's take a look at one that is using the theming some more. Um, grid pager. Okay, so the grid pager is this guy down here. This is the grid pager. And sometimes you can have two grid pagers. Like in this grid, we've got one grid pager up here and one grid pager down here. Notice that they're different colors. And that's because they're using they're using the same background transparency-ness, but it's in different locations in that main background gradient. That's why it looks like that. And I, I, I like that, so I'm going to keep it. <laughs> but how we do that is it, it's actually a little bit more complicated than the other guy. Okay, you can't. So let's uh, let's cop let's comment out all the stuff I did here and paste in that other guy. So let's paste in um, this simple RGBA value, okay, into grid pager, and let's take a look what that looks like. So it's going to look okay here, okay. So you get the similar effect. You're like, okay, well, why did I do so much? So let's actually turn the grids white and see what happens. So if I turn the grids white. So by doing FFF and then E E E and then yeah I'm only I'm only in uh, I would make that dark I'm not gonna do Mozilla right now because I'm just showing you an example okay so it's actually not terrible like I thought it's not horrible so you could technically do that actually I guess uh, well what I thought was gonna happen is that it wouldn't have looked that good it was gonna look a lot worse so if I did 50% white well, okay, 50% white's actually okay. Let me. If I did 50% black, it it uh, doesn't look okay. Obviously, you can have a lot of fun playing with this stuff. Okay, so here's 50% black. It doesn't look good here, but I guess it doesn't matter because you would just do 50% white and it would look fine. So here's 50% white. Okay, and now let's change the other one back to see if 50% white looks okay with this. So here's 50 here's 50% 50 white with this. Okay, so you can now you can see the issue. So using just the 50% white or 50% black, you can see that there's there's no transparency involved in the 50% white or 50% black. I mean there is transparency, but it's not to the background. It's not shining to the background. It's it's changing the transparency based on the color it already is. So you can see how this looks terrible and that's because it's not using this background color. That's why you can't do it. So it didn't make sense. Okay. So that's why you can't just straight use this when you want the background color to shine through. Okay? You want to use a, a gradient because the gradient can actually have it have transparency. So it's transparent to something that is transparency. Okay? So this is literally just a flat color 50% of it, okay? But this is not a flat color. This is saying start completely transparent and go till you're a little not transparent, okay? And so using that technique, we actually can get a complete see-through that here you go, you get, you get, it blends in nicely, and then when we get to the top here, if we can then go ahead and change that to white, you can see that it's not going to look completely out of place. It's actually going to inherit its, its self colors. So it's pretty cool. And you can also see that the text, uh, so let's look at the text color. See how the text is, is dark here? And if I change it back to 
that, you can see that the text is now light. So it's actually also doing the text color, which is kind of cool. Um, so we're doing all that throughout this whole code here. We're doing all these tons of background gradients. And here's the gradient for the button, if you're curious. I know those buttons are on those gradients, so I'll probably make those inherit as well. Um, but you can see how you could do theming. So the way you want to do this when you theme your own projects is you want to set up something that the user can edit, something small that the user can edit. So for me, you only have to edit this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. That's the least I can do. I mean, I can't do any less than that because of the cross-browser compatibility. So this is all the user has to edit, and they can theme their entire system. Um, and then all of this stuff is kind of the colors that get affected by that and then all this stuff is all the actual structure involved in CSS so you know CSS actually does structure as well so there you go that's how you can do theming um, without having to use any and again there's no images in this whole thing at all it's all CSS gradients so it's pretty cool uh, so that's how you would do theming